Changes of state graphs. The aim of the video is for you to be able to interpret heating and cooling graphs that include changes of state. If we take a solid substance and heat it, we can plot a graph of temperature against time. The graph starts off as you might expect, with the temperature of the solid increasing at a steady rate. This is because the molecules are steadily gaining energy. But then the graph plateaus, which means goes flat. That happens because the solid reaches its melting point and begins to change state. As the solid melts into a liquid, the energy being put into the substance is being used to break into molecular bonds between the molecules. Please note, intermolecular bonds join one molecule to a neighbouring molecule. They are different to atomic bonds, which join atoms together to make the molecule. In a solid, it's the intermolecular bonds that keep the molecules in a rigid solid shape. As the molecules gain energy, they eventually have enough energy to overcome the intermolecular bonds holding them in place. Once all the intermolecular bonds have been broken, the solid will completely melt and turn into a liquid. Please note, once the solid melts into a liquid, intermolecular forces between the molecules still exist and constantly attract the particles back together, allowing intermolecular bonds to reform. However, these intermolecular bonds quickly break because the molecules have enough energy to overcome them. It's the constant reforming and breaking of intermolecular bonds in liquids that allow liquids to flow and change their shape, but not their volume. If you continue to heat the liquid, then the temperature will rise again as the molecules gain kinetic energy. I'm going to explain more about kinetic energy and potential energy of particles in a video called Internal Energy. Once the liquid reaches its boiling point, the graph goes flat again, as it changes state into a gas. The reason for the flat part this time is that the intermolecular bonds are being broken permanently, because the particles now have lots of energy to overcome the intermolecular forces. This allows the gas particles to completely escape from the liquid. Have a look at the table I've made that shows the strength of attraction between the molecules and the status of the intermolecular bonds. Once all the intermolecular bonds have been broken, the liquid has completely boiled into a gas. If you keep heating the gas, the temperature will increase. See my videos about gas temperature and pressure. The substance I've shown you here is a pure substance. I chose pure water because there's a good chance you'll know that water melts at 0 degrees C and boils at 100 degrees C, so I'm hoping that'll help you relate to what I'm saying. What I want you to understand is that because the substance is pure, it has one specific temperature for its melting point and one specific temperature for its boiling point. Now I'm going to show you what a temperature time graph looks like for an unpure substance. In other words, a mixture, so you can see the difference. I'm representing the unpure substance with a blue line. It's unpure water, so it starts off pretty much the same as pure water. However, the impurities in the water lower the melting point, which is also the freezing point. So the flat section starts at a lower temperature. Here's a real life example to reinforce your understanding. When it's icy, the gritters put salt on the roads. Salt causes water to freeze at a lower temperature. The saltier the water, the colder it has to be to freeze. Oceans are about 3.5% salt. They freeze at about minus 2 degrees C. What I want you to notice is that the flat section is not as flat as it was for the pure substance. That's because the unpure substance contains a number of different substances, each with different melting points. So it melts over a range of temperatures. 
Once all the intermolecular bonds have been broken, its temperature begins to rise if you continue to heat it. Let's see what happens as the unpure liquid starts to boil. Do you see how it boils over a range of temperatures? Once again, that's because the unpure liquid contains a number of different substances, each with different boiling points. Let's look at a temperature time graph when you cool a pure substance down. When a substance is cooled, the temperature time graph looks just like a mirror image of when it was heated. Hey! As the graph cools to its boiling point, the molecules lose energy. They no longer have enough energy to overcome intermolecular attractive forces, so they get pulled back together and intermolecular bonds start to reform between the molecules, making the gas condense into a liquid. This is seen on the graph as a flat section, as shown. Once all the gas has turned into a liquid, the temperature starts to decrease. If the molecules are cooled further, they slow down enough for stable intermolecular bonds to form between the molecules and start holding them in a rigid structure, changing the state from liquid to solid. Once all the intermolecular bonds are formed between the molecules and it's fully solid, then the temperature decreases if you continue to cool it. Well, I hope that video was useful. There will be plenty more videos to follow. Thanks for all your support. Subscribe to my channel and bang that bell all over the place. Smash the like button and apart from that, work hard, be nice and bye bye for now.